Go ahead. Okay. Um, next is uh, checking over your wheels. Um, a couple of things we're going to cover: uh, tire pressure, uh, lug nuts, and um, spokes, broken spokes. Okay. So the first thing you want to check is make sure that you have appropriate pressure in your tires. It'll make it much easier to roll down the road. 65 psi. 65 is what we're looking for. Um, our shop has a compressor. It's right here. You want to make sure that this red light is on. It's probably going to make noise. Uh, there's a gauge on it. Uh, this valve connection is a little pesky. And let go. There we go, 65. So you check your other two tires in that way. The compressor doesn't always make noise. The pump is running just to fill the tank on it. it uh, so it turns on and off, so don't be worried if it doesn't turn on. Um, next, and this is pretty important, is uh, checking the spokes on all your wheels. Um, you want to make sure there's nothing broken before you go out and, and get it taken care of before you leave the shop. Um, come in a little closer. Um, basically, the spokes are in pairs, and you just want to go around the wheel, squeeze the pairs. It'll be obvious if there's a broken spoke. I always start at the valve, so I have a, a reference point. Now I'll be squeezing the pairs in the back. So I start at the valve, that way I finish at the valve. Everything's good. Okay, if you find one broken spoke, it would be okay to ride the bike um, and just watch it throughout the day. If you have two broken spokes, you should get the wheel changed before you go out. If there's more than that, it's genuinely unsafe. So um, watch out for that. Lastly is these lug nuts on the rear axle have a tendency to loosen. Um, and you want to make sure it's tight. The way you do that, grab the tire, and I'm going to pull back and forth this way, and I shouldn't feel any movement. That one feels good. I'm going to check the other side. That one also feels good. Let's say, for example, this one was loose. Um, there's one wrench that will t that's big enough to fit these nuts, so that's over here on the bench. This one with the red handle, um, please, anything you take off the bench, put it back when you're done. And basically, I, I think of uh, tightening this nut similar to, uh, it's a nice gentle hug, it's not a crushing squeeze. So what you want to do is um, tighten it just enough that when you grab the wheel and move it back and forth, you don't get any play. Um, if we come over to this bike, basically, if you tighten that nut too much, you can do damage to the bike. Um, you can actually pull the axle outward in the bike frame, causing the brake to rub, which means you'll be fighting that all day long and potentially doing damage to some of the internal components there. So. Don't over tighten that. Um, the first time you need to do this, um, ask another more experienced driver for a little bit of help. Um, don't over tighten those. But we would do all those things for all three wheels. Uh, check the lug nuts, make sure they're tight. Check the tire pressure, check the spokes. Cool. Um, you still rolling? Yeah. Uh, next in your pre-ride checklist... Would be, uh, I'm sorry, can we do that one more time? Go ahead. Next in your pre-ride checklist would be to check all of the electrical lighting to make sure it's working. Um, basically, what you want to do is uh, just check your turn signals. Um, and what I do is, by standing in front of the bike, I can see the light in front, but I can also see that there's...
flexion in the back. Um, so I'll do one side, other side, and then check the rear brake, and, or I'm sorry, check the rear brake light, and that it happens by squeezing the front brake lever. It's good to know that on these bikes, the brake light does not come on by sque squeezing the rear brake, only by the front, because this is where the switch is. It turns it on and off. Lastly, if you anticipate riding after dark, make sure that you have some form of working headlight. We have a number of different styles, but make sure you have one that works. Um, you want to be seen out there. If you find that your lights are not working, the most common cause of that problem is uh, things not being connected at the battery, so check your battery connections. Again, a number of different styles of batteries, but um, sometimes it can be right at the battery terminals, but more commonly, it's at the charging plug that uh, things have not been plugged back in. Um, lastly, are the cosmetic things to make. Sorry. Lastly, are the cosmetic things to make sure your bike is looking good. Um, there's a, a number of products that we have. They are over here. Um, the biggest one is we use uh, this Mrs. Myers to just clean off the seat and the body. You'll also need uh, some towels. Just make sure you're using a clean towel. Uh, those are typically over here on this shelf. <laughs> Uh, if you don't have a, a clean fabric towel, there are uh, like a blue paper towel that you can use. I think it's important to uh, clean off the seat, and a lot of people might miss that, but if you think about being a passenger, you don't want to sit down on a dirty seat. Just spritz it down, wipe it down. I would do the whole thing. I'll save you a little time and not demonstrate cleaning the whole bike, but I go around. This is also... Um, a, a way of discovering if there's any damage to the body of your bike that you can report um, to somebody that can repair it or you can get, um, we sometimes have touch-up paint in the shop and you can touch up minor scratches, but it's just a nice way to go over the bike, keep them looking good. also a good chance to make sure that your seat belts are out and available to your passengers. Those can easily get tucked down underneath the seat, so make sure those are available. Um, there are some other products here. Uh, this stuff, Poor Boy, uh, this is good for cleaning the white walls of the tires if you wanted to do that. Uh, and we also have Armor All that you can use on the, the vinyl of the seat. I do recommend that people not use it on the flat part of the seat. Um, it makes it really slippery. Um, you don't want people, somebody to come sliding off your seat, so I try not to use it there, but it does make it look nice. So that's your pre-ride checklist. It takes just a couple of minutes. Um, it can save you a lot of time and hopefully will help you make a little more money out there.